Good. So here we are. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Our first episode of Sexual Alchemy with our guest Alice Folks Kalsa. Mm -hmm. Newly Kalsa, mm -hmm. newly married. Newly. Yep. <laughs> I was so blessed to be at your ceremony. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. So I'm so beautiful. happy to have you as my first guest. It truly feels like divinely inspired and divinely orchestrated that uh, you are here I and, and beginning this with me. Um, I felt very called to do this and you have been an enormous part in my own journey mm -hmm. in um, my evolution as a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little choked up because <laughs> I really feel that. And so mm -hmm. it's such an honor to have this um, space for conversation with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to be able to share with as many people as possible your wisdom and what you have to offer mm -hmm. in terms of your process and mm -hmm. the growth that you have achieved mm -hmm. on your own and how you've been able to inspire so many other people to their own growth and recovery um, in so many different areas from mm -hmm. nutrition to addiction recovery to sexual trauma recovery um, and a fellow kundalini yoga teacher mm -hmm. and a, a fellow goddess priestess divine mm -hmm. alchemist thank in you, all that sister. you do yeah. thank you i remember the first time we met which was like 12 years ago i think that makes sense yeah 11 or 12 years ago and it was in teacher training mm -hmm. for kundalini yoga teacher training and we went out we were in the marina yeah and um, I, we sat down and I like ordered a big coffee and you were like, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember right away thinking you were truly one of the most beautiful women I had ever met. But it was the beauty that was within you that, that was coming out. And um, seeing you like so many times after you would teach a class, like a prenatal class. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Um, your humility and your grace. I've just always really looked up to you and um, resonated with you, always. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that resonance is is so important for women to yeah. find each other and find the community and the ways that we can be truth tellers mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and break open a new space in yes. terms of honoring the divine feminine. And yes. I really feel called to open up the space and the conversation of the sacral chakra let's, let's get it. into the second chakra get it. into the impact and the importance of the second chakra mm -hmm. and and in all the ways that that translates mm -hmm. in all the ways the creative force works through us men and women mm -hmm. right and that there's so much healing that needs to be done on this planet there is so much collective trauma mm -hmm. in that arena and how we as light workers we as healers we as teachers can help people access that and we're going from this extreme I feel more and more collectively we're in this either we're still in this repressive state about mm -hmm. sexuality and all things regarding that or we're completely pornographied there mm -hmm. is this exploited um, over emphasis mm -hmm. on it and so what I my goal in this and what I feel very called to do is help people get back to or find or perhaps discover the sacred mm. in sexual exchange, the mm. sacred in the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to start with you and start with your work and mm. what it is that you're doing. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So in terms of helping people specifically, I want to talk with about overcoming trauma. Mm -hmm. um, what has been the most effective way in dealing with people who have been uh, victims of sexual abuse, mm. be it as a child, be it um, as an adult? Mm. What do you find is most helpful in, in helping them? Mm. I think that's a really important question. And um, it's really important to, to for us as a collective to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because trauma is under, for so many individuals, right. underneath chronic illness, underneath mm -hmm. addiction, underneath self-destructive behaviors. Yeah. Um, and once I think we start on any kind of transformational path, then we start kind of, you know, chipping away at the layers or the, you know, of the onion. Mm -hmm. So many people find that at the center point, 
you know, it was a core trauma that initiated them into self-abandoning or self-sabotage. Right. So I think that calling it out and saying that it is a national, it's an international mm -hmm. crisis. Exactly. And um, <clears throat> that it's reported, like just reported cases alone, I think something like 33% of, of women have been uh, sexually abused. And that's just reported. That's reported. Right. And think of how many are too afraid to tell or it, talk about it. Exactly. Or don't even remember. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at it that on a, um, on a global level, mm -hmm. the, and the crisis that, that, that trauma creates in people's lives, and it shows up in about at least nine different life areas. It shows mm -hmm. up in our cognition, in our ability to even learn, to concentrate, to focus. Mm -hmm. Shows up in physical health. Um, in our ability to um, have healthy relationships, in addictions, and um, I mean, it just, the list goes on and on. And I kind of think about trauma as like a, you know, like in Greek mythology, you'd have those um, those hydras, mm -hmm. those dragons with like nine heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I see it. But I think that the, when helping individuals with it, it's first understanding what it is that we're, we're dealing with. And I look at it as like a nine-headed hydra that has these different components, but that's the tends to always be the key, the common denominator, mm -hmm. right? Is the trauma. And so I think step one is awareness right. as to what it is that that we're really that we're up against or that we're up against, and I believe on a higher level simultaneously, it's happening for us. It's happening because it initiates us into a level of like, I have to um, rise to my best self, right? right? It's like a, um, it, it evokes the heroine inside mm, us. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it has that potential. So it, it is also can be an initiation. Yes. So I think looking at the gravity and simultaneously looking at the opportunity for transformation is like the first step. Right. That's such an interesting point. I, I think what's also interesting to note is in our collective, historically, that we haven't been talking about sexual abuse until, I mean, I will, I will even cite Oprah, mm -hmm. right? Oprah mm -hmm. brought the discussion of sexual abuse by being courageous enough to talk about her own yes. experience and talk about what that did to her and what the consequences of that were and how she, how she regarded herself as a worthy human being mm -hmm. based on what that kind of trauma did mm -hmm. and that's so important to note that people there is that to some degree this dismissive attitude well get over it you know it happened you know it, how much could that really affect you um, sexual damage at a young age is so corrosive to the soul mm -hmm. it's so corrosive to the entire being um, a therapist speculated to me that he said also part of what you what your point about it being transformative that what it can open up is you have to go out of the physical body. You have to take yourself out of that immediate situation. And in doing so, you do get access to the mm -hmm. higher centers. You do realize that you have these spiritual support systems around you. And yes. I think that can be the uh, silver lining and the yes. gift in it. And I think that many people who have gone through it and have recovered recognize that wow it allowed me to open into a deeper place because I had to escape the trauma it's really true and have you found that to be true I, with people you've treated absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. and um and I really think of it as a collaboration mm -hmm. you know working working with somebody and and um I I've really found uh, on my journey and working with others it's been like a multi-modality approach okay and I was in Peru on a retreat this this summer and we went to this one site and it was this initiation site it was it was basically like a um, a bridge to another dimension mm. uh, it was a portal right. and when I was there I got this understanding that women that have been sexually abused their their chakra system is actually how they need to be um, you know, they're always talking about like start at the root chakra and work your way up in the mm -hmm. lower triangle. But these women have completely activated crown chakras. 
right? right? And in deeply awake third eye centers. And so many times creativity and expression and in the heart and the love. And I found that for women with sexual trauma, mm -hmm. the last place often they want to be is in their body. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's that gift that you were saying that what happens is the um, the interdimensional realms and the psychic realms, the angelic realms, that space opens up and that I believe that uh, women that have experienced this slowly come more and more and more inside of themselves mm -hmm. because they learn that it's safe, right. you know, but we have to start kind of up top and work our way down and anchor back into and the earth, anchor back in and truly as much as there is that desire to be out of our bodies. Mm -hmm. I think especially if you've experienced trauma, the reality is um, that is escapism and mm -hmm. ultimately our highest purpose as healers and as conduits yes. is to anchor that energy yes. into the planet. And yes. if we're up there, we're not doing a lot of good. Yeah, because it's fun up there. Yeah. You know, I have to say when I first started practicing Kundalini, I had a full on Kundalini mm -hmm. awakening where I had connected and tapped into that realm. Yeah. And I was so happy for about the first two years. And then two years into my practice, I had some suppressed memories start to mm -hmm. emerge. Okay. And I'd also put down alcohol and, and drugs and other things. And all of a sudden, I it was, it was terrible because I realized mm -hmm. that I had been on a spiritual high for about two years and I needed that. God bless it. It was an amazing experience for me. True. But when I had that awakening or re realization that I had been suppressing things, I felt like I was slowly put back into my body more and more and more and in through my throat, into my heart. And then I went through a period of about seven years of health issues. Mm. And um, at that time I went on an antidepressant and, and I have no opinion on people doing that or not doing that. I just want to say it's an individual choice with the doctor. Sure. Um, for me, it was what I needed at the time, but that spiritual connection went away. Oh, the, okay. And I was in my body dealing with this stuff. And, um, and over the period of time, I continued to get um, sicker. And I'm happy to say I've made a full recovery but it was so painful because at one point I was like hanging out with the angels and all of a sudden I'm in my body feeling pain. Right. And um, looking back on the other side of that, I realized that was the greatest gift that's ever been, it makes me emotional, it's ever been given to me because it brought me into my body and into the places that needed to be acknowledged and witnessed, mm -hmm. which is the heart, which is the stomach, the adrenals, the womb, the sacral that. chakra. Oh, yeah right our feet our hands and it brought me to the earth and to the mother earth mm -hmm. and to my knees right. and so i think that um just as much as this in an amazing activation and awakening what's equally amazing is a process that brings us to our knees and brings us to the earth yeah and that's the healing mm -hmm. of the trauma and mm -hmm. that's acknowledging all those parts that were abused mm -hmm. and um, the profanity of that yeah. in stark contrast to the sacred is yes. is staggering in some yes. ways and it's very hard for our system to acclimate to the extremes of it to reconcile it yeah, yeah. how does the nervous system reconcile it how does it hold right. the magnificent and the horror Right. Simultaneously. Right. Which is the human condition. Which is the it? human condition. Right. That's why we come here to uh, Earth School to figure out. Mm -hmm. I feel, as a female, I, I've always felt honored to be a woman. Mm -hmm. Even at times where it seemed really inconvenient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't necessarily, you know, a mirrored back to me that that was a good thing, right? Um, and a mother, too. And a mother. And... Yeah, truly, my biggest honor um, mm -hmm. at this point in my life. But um, helping women understand that in a world where that seems very inverted, right? Mm -hmm. that, that we are still in a patriarchy, that we still live in a plane where the feminine is suppressed and oppressed mm -hmm. and denied and objectified. Mm -hmm. um, it is 
deep work to be able to not only heal our wounds, but then heal the collective wounds that don't even sometimes acknowledge that they're denied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I struggle with, and I want to create a platform here is of forgiveness, but starting with that acknowledgement, yes. starting with that recognition that um, any way that the female is wounded, we're all wounded. Yes. Humanity is wounded. And until we can heal that sacred feminine, we cannot heal the, the mm -hmm. sacred masculine. Mm -hmm. And the masculine needs us. Mm -hmm. They need us to heal so that we can help them heal. And I very much want to emphasize that because I do think the, the space of forgiveness, and I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you about that, that to be in our rage, which is sometimes is absolutely important to rise up and to feel that Kali, mm -hmm. yes. justifiable mm -hmm. rage that many women have felt and many people have witnessed, but how can we move into a space of forgiveness that's ultimately going to allow the collective healing? Like, mm -hmm. do you, when you're dealing with an individual trauma, mm -hmm. um, with a woman in particular, getting to a space of forgiveness of the abuser, of the event, mm -hmm. of the events, of the whatever happened. Um, yeah. Can you speak about that? Yeah, I think that's a, I think it's a wonderful question and it's a really, um, I think it's the most the most important question we can ask and I feel like in working with other women what I encourage them and in, in, in my own life experience is to heal it like to heal it we have to really feel it mm -hmm. and so I think um, a great number of human beings when they've experienced something that's horrific uh, minimize mm -hmm. Uh, downplay, uh, partly disassociate. Yeah. You know, there's so many different defense mechanisms that happen. And until an, until an individual can look squarely in the eye at kind of the ice bath reality mm -hmm. of this is what's happened and on earth in the 3D, this is how it's affected my life, right? right? My memory is impaired. I have a gastrointestinal disorder. Um, inability to create intimacy, right? Or not inability, but impaired intimacy sure. skills, right? Yeah. Um, I think step one is really understanding how trauma has impacted their life. Mm -hmm. And I think the next step in that process is is moving into self-forgiveness mm -hmm. first. Self-forgiveness first. Self-forgiveness yeah. first, right? right. Because so often there's tremendous anger and disownership of our own being, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in this process, right? There's been a lot of self-abandonment. Mm -hmm. And so I think first getting to a place where we're on our own team, we have our own back. Right. And I've seen that happen a lot through like in particular inner child work right. and like compassion because the first thing to do I think we all do is is to take it on as our own yes. it's my fault yes. I allowed it in whatever yes. way be it as a child or in as an adult yes. who's experienced something that we yeah internalized it, internalized it. Yeah. and and if it happens as a child I mean under the age of like four or five right like our egos aren't everything is is all about us right and so if you're abused at that time it has to be your fault or you know um and, and if that's the way that you're identifying, walking around in the world saying, somehow I created this, yeah. and there's somehow something fundamentally wrong with me or bad, mm -hmm. that's the first person that needs forgiveness. Yeah. And I think once we have an authentic understanding and forgiveness for ourselves, we can begin to move into a place authentically of forgiving others. Yeah. Um, but it has to start with true acknowledgement because mm -hmm. forgiveness can't happen when we're sugarcoating right. or when we're in denial or when we're like bypassing it. I think it happens when you go through the eye of the needle and then you can hold yourself with the deepest compassion. Yeah. And then from there we can understand that what happened was very likely out of pain. Yeah. Another person's pain body, another person's yeah. unconsciousness, another person's woundedness. And that's a big, big topic. And that's something mm -hmm. that I don't even know how to grasp that 
what is it about our collective, mm -hmm. and we will say masculine, mm -hmm. that is in so much pain that this is happening on such right. a mass level? Right. Why are we seeing abuse on a mass level in, in the Catholic Church, yeah. for example? What is the collective sickness? Mm -hmm. What is the collective pain? Mm -hmm. How do we even begin to touch on that? And yeah. it's such a huge question. It's such a huge question. Why is there so much rage toward the feminine? Yeah. What is the fear behind it? Mm -hmm. The fear behind misogyny, the fear behind ways that men are controlling women and trying to control their sexuality mm -hmm. and their ownership in different religions, let's mm -hmm. say, or different cultures, that there's this need to tamp down the power of the feminine. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I want to explore more and more. I want to have conversations that say, what's going on? Why are we so afraid of the feminine energy? Mm -hmm. And what if we embrace it? Mm -hmm. What if we say, the feminine exists, I exist because the feminine exists. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing, not a threatening thing. Not a threatening thing, yeah. And how do we make that 180 because it does feel like it would have to literally flip things upside down mm -hmm. to to acknowledge that mm -hmm. I think that's a profound question and how do we invite our brothers into yes I, I think that's a profound question I think he really hit like something really really important right where it's not this what what is the middle ground between like you know these black and white views on sex yeah. And these black and white views on sexuality. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that this space that you're entering into, which is so um, intoxicating and enthralling, is saying, what if there is non-duality and all of it is existing simultaneously? What does that look like, yeah. right? When it's right. all happening. Right. And that is, that's the feminine, I think. And I, I actually think that's the experience of God, of the feminine and the masculine merging is it's all happening right that the, you know the horror and the ecstasy simultaneously in life in every moment and so I think when we enter into that space which I think is really the tantric space yes yes it is terrifying because we have to let go completely in that surrender yeah that surrender is so feminine and then masculine is really also based on structure and right. containment. And so for a masculine to surrender completely into this unknown space, mm -hmm. I could imagine if I can imagine the um the fear that can arise, you know, and because it's unraveling a hierarchical system yes. that we've been uh programmed to believe is the only way. Mm -hmm. And so what would seem threatening about a more feminine based system is if you're basing it on a hierarchy then that's a matriarchy right right but that's not what ideally the 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 not even ideally it's not what truthfully the divine feminine no. is the divine feminine is egalitarian egalitarian it's saying I when that. i win you win yes and when you win i win mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be i get mine and you can't have yours mm -hmm. that is the old way and it cannot exist anymore yeah because we are seeing it unravel mm -hmm. and we're seeing the decay of it yes. and the chaos and the pain. And that's the most profound thing. Like it, it, I feel so compelled to invite men into that space mm -hmm. and to recognize the healing that's mm -hmm. possible for all of us, the more we can get there. Mm -hmm. And I know it feels very abstract, like, well, how the hell do we do that? But right. we start here. We start here. And we start with every little step in healing and forgiving, mm -hmm. right? It's true. And having, and I think healing and forgiving starts with honesty. Yeah. And um, starts with saying, what does it look like to really talk about these things? Mm -hmm. And and for us to start, um, there's this practice that my 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 husband is um, we're newly newlyweds and. Um, Shout out to Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> and we've started um, a morning practice that was uh, passed down to us for some very, very sacred, special individuals. And one of them is um, in the morning, it is um, we light a candle and we speak into the flame out loud because mm -hmm. the power of prayer is really activated when we use our voice. Yeah. Right. And in the, let's say, right, like the, the, 
the word, right? And the, and the, mm. the word, and then our words cast spells and spelling right. and all these things. So when we speak it, um, and so we express through gratitude. And then um, something I've really, really enjoyed is we then, and this word may not work for some people, um, and I understand that, but confess into the fire. Another way is I think release anything that is troubling the heart. And that's something I've really enjoyed doing so much is to look into this flame and say, these are the things I'm afraid of. These are the things mm -hmm. that I'm holding on to. Like, and in something, something, and I heard Michael Beckwith said it's the number one name of God is something, mm -hmm. right? Like okay. when we, something happens when the, the things inside of us that we think are unspeakable, yeah. unsayable, irredeemable, right. when we bring those to the light, that's I think when the healing really begins to happen yeah. and and so you having the, like so much courage to do this podcast and to start having these conversations of like what we're not talking about let's mm -hmm. talk about because truly shame and guilt are the most corrosive right yes. it keeps you in the past it keeps, keeps you, in the past. you stuck in a state of um and and also the reason most likely will people will go back into self-destructive behavior because they're self-punishing yep. in their own mind and then yeah. why not take up the heroin again because that's it's it. better than what I'm doing to myself. Yes. Right? And that's exact and, and shame grows in secrecy. Yeah. That's a shame big one. loves this the dark and secrets. And so when we bring the healing light of shame like when we bring light to shame, yeah. the sunlight is actually what alchemizes it. And then other people are like, oh my God, I didn't know you could say that. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. you felt that too. And then what is that expression? We're only as sick as our secrets. Yeah. So when we expose those. And so much of that, mm -hmm. if I may interject, Please. is embodied in the sacral chakra. Yes. That we as a collective, as a society, has kept so much secretive about sexuality and our expression of sexuality yes. and demonizing it or making it the original sin, right? We've, we've been taught. I mean, I can't even, I, I mean, it's just <laughs> that that's a pervasive thing that people are taught, mm -hmm. that your conception was a sin, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is the sin. Mm -hmm. That is the sin right there. That is the lie. And I know that will sound um, controversial to some, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to stand by that without <laughs> yeah. without question. I truly yes. believe that we, if we don't believe that sexuality is beautiful, we will make it ugly. Yes, and we will make it perverted, Amen. and we will make it sick. Yes, because we have accepted that that our nature is not beautiful. Yes, and I stand in strong defiance of that. Yes, I'm and so I know you stand that. in that with me, and I believe that that if we collectively can shift that, mm -hmm. enormous healing is possible. Mm -hmm. I so believe that, and, and, and it's, I love what you're saying because I, um, it's really easy to fragment and to say, holiness looks like this. Holiness mm -hmm. looks like virgin, piety, virgin, right? Celibacy. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, you have, you know, lust and you know and it looks like you know all these different things and so oh my gosh it was Hargo's mm -hmm. um grandfather he told me this I think you and I talked about this whenever you have two points that go back and forth yeah. you only have duality right. so if all we have is you know lust on the one hand and purity on the other automatically we're set up for a conflict and there can be no resolution mm -hmm. right. and he said but if you introduce a third point into something then you can bring it into a trine. You can bring it into a triangle, into harmony. Mm -hmm. And if that third point is then what does embodied sexuality look like, all of a sudden these two points that are maybe juxtaposed get to merge into that point. Right. And it gets to say, you know what? Like I can, I can be like all of me. I can celebrate the fact that... Um, I'm horny. I can celebrate the fact mm -hmm. that like I love pleasure and I want to receive that. And I can celebrate the fact that I have a powerful meditative mind mm -hmm. and I can even bring those together okay. into a space of the unknown and create, create a new reality, merging those two things together. Revolution. Why not? I can be horny and holy. Horny and holy. 
<laughs> hashtag. Hashtag horny and holy. I love it. And I really think the word whole, holy is really just about like holy, like W-H-O-L-L-Y. Mm -hmm. Holy you. All of it. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Right, because anytime we have to deny and suppress, again, it's in the darkness, and it's, it's uh, and and so much of that. Like I really have been called. Uh, Mag Mary Magdalene has been coming in mm -hmm. a lot lately, in mm -hmm. meditations and everywhere I go. I mean, mm -hmm. it's to the point where I'm like, I know, forget it, she's here. <laughs> I hear but you. it is that that divine energy of the what was represented as the whore, right? Yeah. That she was this yeah. fallen woman. Right, and then we have the other Mary as the Virgin, right? Yes. And so these are these two archetypes of the feminine that were given, that's prescribed to us, right, by a certain religion. And um, what does that tell us as women, right? So in terms of that space, we have two options, right? right. There's the one or the other, and you know, you, where is that third? Where is that? Third? Where's the third? Yeah, right, because we just have conflict and we have split, you know, schizophrenic ideas of what sex is. It, yeah. it is, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a schizophrenic idea of what sex is. Mm -hmm. Can you move your hand up on the mic? Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, so I, I also wanted to bring up, I've been thinking a lot about in terms of, um, you know, the Me, the, uh, Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that it does seem kind of crazy at this point that, w that suddenly we're all going, yeah, that's actually not okay. What we've all accepted as mm -hmm. normal male behavior, mm -hmm. the grabbing and the harassment right. and the um, power, you know, abuse, that, that we all finally came together as women and said, yeah, we're not gonna, ha we're not gonna accept that anymore mm -hmm. and we're gonna have boundaries. And it is amazing because I think back even just 20 years ago when I started as an actress in the business, mm -hmm. I thank God that I was never subjected to anything too awful, but I don't remember not being sexually abused. I mean, sexually, excuse me, harassed in yes. different situations, yeah. not being sexually harassed um, by various people in power, by various situations. And that I, um, where did I get the programming that I was like, yeah, that's just my lot in life. and. Mm -hmm. I can laugh it off or I can think of it as a compliment or, or yeah. that that was some kind of validation that he wants to treat me that way or speak to me that way or right. talk about what I'm wearing or talk about my body as if it were um, an, an object. object outside of you. And then what I, I want to ask you is kind of where, how do we heal the sense of male entitlement? Mm -hmm. That we are in a, still in a society where a frat boy, or for lack of a better term, can rape a woman at a party. And the judge lets him off because he doesn't want to ruin his life. Mm -hmm. That's a story that we've heard and we still hear. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Where is that consciousness mm -hmm. coming from? A, I don't know if we can even answer mm -hmm. that, but B, how do we heal that? How mm -hmm. do we as women, part of it is we have to rage, we mm -hmm. have to fight back, we mm -hmm. have to stand up. Mm -hmm. But in your opinion, that sense of entitlement over women's bodies, mm -hmm. how do we heal from that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I feel like we're seeing a shift on this planet that is showing up in personal relationships, in family systems, mm -hmm. in our own sexuality in um you know work career in the political arena and the spiritual arena and there's this amazing um poem from <laughs> Jacques <Jean -Snorin. laughs> from from dh lawrence and he says um um basically when we get out of the prison of our ego or like something to the effect of like squirrels turning in the cages of our personality mm. and we get into the forest again um, we shall shiver with cold and fright, mm. but things will happen to us so that we don't know ourselves. Cool, unlying life will rush in and make our bodies taut with power. We shall stamp our feet with new power and old things will fall down. Mm. And we shall laugh and institutions will curl up like burnt paper. Wow. And I like go to that again and again and again because what I see happening 
is like one by one, two by two, 20 by 20, 50 by 50, people are waking up. And and um, I think it's brilliant that I think maybe in the past, right, these, these profound spiritual leaders would come in and then they would be assassinated. They would be executed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now there are these star seeds that are all over the planet right. and we're waking up together. And I think that there's these little, you know, star seeds of light happening on a world global level. And I think that as we rise, we stamp our feet with new power, with the awareness. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, as we stamp our feet with this new power, as we experience life as for us, that we're just a part of life, these institutions are falling to the ground yeah. and they are burning. And they're fighting on their way and down. And they're fighting on their way down with yeah. all they have because yeah. that's all they have left in them. Yeah. And I think that part of this is we have to watch it burn. Right. A little right. bit. I think that that's part of the the is to is to embrace the the energy of destruction or the energy of the fire, yes. and know that the burning things down is is part of life. Right. You know that that's the best answer I have. Is like is is beholding this and knowing maybe the best possible thing that could have ever happened to America is to have a president who is so um um who who is the embodiment of toxic masculinity oh, yeah. because maybe just maybe that created a big enough catalyst to burn this thing down mm -hmm. so it can be built anew so it can be that phoenix and it can rise up again and i and i think that that's what's happening and how that shows up in men's lives is i think that they need to see what a holy woman is and, and that starts mm -hmm. with the mother. That starts with the mother. Yeah. And that, I feel such a responsibility as a mother mm -hmm. um, to both a daughter and a son. But really, um, we teach our daughters, you know, we were saying before, to how to avoid being raped. But where we should start is to teach our sons reverence. Reverence. For the feminine. For the feminine. Yeah. On, on a far deeper level than what they're getting. Yes. Yeah. And I say this with, like, the deepest love for my mom mm -hmm. but I would wake up in the morning and hear my mom saying in the mirror you disgusting fat pig you piece of you know fill in the blank I woke up listening to the tape of hatred and I think that to teach men how to revere the feminine starts with the feminine revering the feminine starts with the feminine saying you know what i'm looking in the mirror and saying i'm beautiful i love you i appreciate you you know and, and us doing that for ourselves and sometimes that is in such defiance to the external messages mm -hmm. that we're being given that if you don't look like this and you don't have uh this number on the scale and if you haven't mm -hmm. you know met these expectations that those compliments are not worthy right. of you that right. you are not worthy of those compliments um, and that is a revolutionary act, right? Revolutionary. I mean, just For sitting on here today, I'm like, oh, do you know, I, I took everything to not say, I don't want to look fat. I mean, that's still in the psyche, right? Of like, oh, okay. And it's like, that's still there, right? Yeah, it's and programmed. It's programmed. It's yeah. deep that, yeah. that self hatred, like body objectification yeah. is baked in there really, really, really deep. Yeah. And that, and that disassembling, like so much of the what I think of myself and yourself as Kundalini yoga teachers is to get into the subconscious, right? To mm -hmm. start to unravel and unfold and peel off the layers of the onion that program that into us. So starting with the mother, the familiar system, the religion, the art, you know, immediate yeah. culture, and then outward into what messages do you take in as you drive down the street? Yes. What images are you looking at Instagram that says you've got to be photoshopped and yes. look like this? And this is the body standard 10 years ago, but now this is the body standard of this decade. And you have to morph your body to look like Through that. Right. Um, and how much mm -hmm. energy is wasted of ours in our obsessive or our collective obsession mm -hmm. with that fixation? Mm -hmm. And what a distraction towards really what we should to be power. Doing. Not yeah. that we shouldn't care about our aesthetic to some degree and that we shouldn't take pride in our absolutely. physical appearance and, and our hair. But yeah, there is a, you know, there is a distortion 
into the extreme of just almost dysmorphic, yes. right? That we can't even see the beauty because we have this fictional idea of what beauty is. Yes. And I love what you said, right? Like the collective obsession, mm -hmm. the feminine collective obsession, like how much energy is that voltage wise or however you image, right? right? Yeah. So as, as the feminine, if we made an agreement to take that obsession, I heard kind of last night, um, like really, I, I loved what Yogi Bhajan said, like commotional to devotional, right? Mm -hmm. If we could take the obsession around, I'm not fill in the blank enough Right. to I am the divine feminine if we could take that obsession in you and turn it into power mm -hmm. there would be all the energy we would need to have a global revolution or evolution right. into into the feminine remembering yeah and I like that word even like remember it's like the members of our body re like joining them again remembering ourselves you know yeah. and yeah, but that I think that's where we could get the energy. Yeah, the obsession, right? You know? uh, and the, the obsession, not in if if it, one thing, mm -hmm. if it's about self care and about self love, absolutely and accentuating our beauty. It often is seems to be driven by the fear and disgust with ourselves yes. that we're not enough, the feeling of un un unworthiness, and unfortunately, that channel is a negative. Mm -hmm. That's a negative spiral down. Yep. And so anywhere you put that energy is going to be increasing that negative voltage. Yes. If you can turn that into self-love, I want to do this because I feel so good about myself. Yes. I feel so worthy that I want to look attractive. Mm -hmm. That's a very different vibration because we are not telling women you can't care about what your hair looks like. Mm -hmm. We're saying really it's about where the intentionality behind yes. that is a very different vibration. It's everything. The intention, the intention is I want to experience my divine beauty. That I want to feel beautiful, celebrate myself. Celebrate myself. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And instead of like, I will love myself when. Right, right. Yes, that it's conditional. To, to fill in some And then God quote. forbid you get older. God, right. <laughs> <laughs> really screwed. You just got to keep getting more Botox yeah, yeah, and, and all of freeze it. everything. It's so crazy, yeah. you know? And yeah, you're so right. The intention moving it from like... I love shame. myself now. Shame. Yeah. Shame to grace. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Shame to grace. Mm -hmm. Alice, there's so many other things I would love to discuss with you and we're out of time, but I promise that you'll come back and I we'll would, do this I again. I would love to. We'll keep we do this, this every day. Conversation going. <laughs> Jacques will keep snoring on my lap. Thank you so um, much. What a wonderful, wonderful project that you're doing. It's, it, it's, it's so needed. Thank you. Thank you, Dave Carr, for doing this work and for being brave and bold to say, you know what, I'm going to bring harmony and illumination into areas that can be scary and terrifying, right? It's like jumping off the high dive, yeah. but you're taking it on. Thank you. You're allowing it yeah. and so much healing will happen from this. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. so brave. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being my first guest. It's such an honor. Oh my God, this has been amazing. I love you too. I love you too. Thank you. Salam, sister. Mm -hmm. Great job, you guys. That was awesome. That was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that was awesome, you guys. Yeah.